the top 10 home remedies of 2020 coming up. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Welcome to 2021. I know many of you are happy to see 2020 go, me being one of them, but there was a bunch of great home remedies you really should be aware of. They can be especially beneficial for your dogs and cats. Here are my top 10. Number 10, a new remedy for dog dandruff. Dandruff is just dead skin. And if you're dealing with excessive dandruff, we're, we're dealing with excessive amounts of dead skin. Is a natural shampoo. It's actually my stinky dog shampoo, which can work really well for our dogs that have dandruff. One, we're starting out with green tea. Two, we're gonna be using two tablespoons of this concentrated soap. It's called Castile soap. Three, we're gonna be using 10 drops of lavender essential oil. And four, we're gonna be using two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So all those in different combination uh, can do multiple things to be really beneficial for your dog's skin. But in particular, um, they can work really well for our dogs that have underlying allergies and secondary skin fungal infections that can play a big role in causing our dogs to have dandruff, all this excess, excessive dead dying skin. Number nine, how to quickly stop your dog from coughing. <coughs> your dog is a cough. The supernatural cough syrup works great. This is made by Syro. It is organic elderberry syrup, which includes the elderberry, the honey, the apple cider vinegar, and the propolis. You want to give it a good shake. As far as dose wise, well, for our dogs, I would suggest a half a teaspoon for 10 pounds of body weight. Number eight, an especially effective anti-inflammatory. The miracle healing power of this over-the-counter drug discovered by a Russian chemist in the 1800s. Ta-da, it is this one called a DMSO or dimethyl sulfoxide. That's Murray. It could be good for you. So how does it work? Well, it's a sulfur-containing compound and sulfur is indispensable through most of the cells in our body, in our pet's body. It also has this unique ability to rapidly penetrate through the skin, as well as even passing through the blood-brain barrier. So it's allowed to you know, get into the specific areas that are damaged and be beneficial. Because it rapidly penetrates through the skin, through your pet's skin, you are gonna wanna be using gloves. So here's my little handy dandy exam glove. And we're gonna drop some on Murray's skin. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. You, El Murray. So here's my bottle of DMSO I picked up from the co-op, cost me about $10. Super cost effective. And comes in a nice little dropper. Can be applied directly to any inflamed joint. Doesn't, there's no smell to it. It doesn't hurt, it's this clear liquid. Just rub it into the affected joint. Easy so much better than having to give your cat who doesn't like pills a pill. Is that not easy, Murray? Number seven, a great natural antibiotic. Tula was attacked, suspect it was a puncture wound, there could be an infection. What am I gonna do about it? Say you've got a dog or cat, the same issue. What are a couple of simple, quick and easy things you can do to prevent the infection, prevent the abscess? Give your dog or cat some pain relief. What's this best the last thing I'm talking about? Done a recent video on it, I've yet to use it orally. Colloidal silver. I've had many pet parent talk to me about colloidal silver. I've been pretty resistant. Veterinary wise, pretty much drilled into me like colloidal silver, bad, doesn't work. It's just like this alternative woohoo medicine out there. Silver and colloidal silver in general has been extensively studied, proven to be pretty darn safe and have some pretty impressive antibacterial properties. Thousands of people, thousands of dogs and cats have taken colloidal silver with no ill effects. And so many of those same people have seen some really positive results. 
I'm, I'm fairly convinced now it's got some pretty decent antibacterial properties. So what I'm gonna be using with Tula. So when we're looking at kind of a standard dose, kind of an average dose for most dogs and cats, about a quarter of a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight, you know, twice a day. Two dropper fulls equal half a teaspoon. That is our measured amount. You know what, it's odorless, it's tasteless, and she's thinking it's honey. I don't know if you're gonna take it. Here you go, down the hatch. What do you think? Number six, an especially helpful antiviral. A mystery supplement. Just so happens to be in red wine. It happens to be in these guys, yummy blueberries. Mmm. These are good, but they're cool. They just, they just came out of my freezer. It's in this red onion, and this apple peel, even in green tea. What is it? It happens to be this supplement. It's called quercetin. A paper published in 2014 is titled Quercetin, a promising treatment for the common cold. Currently in Montreal, Canada right now, there's researchers who are studying uh, quercetin for its effect against COVID-19, the coronavirus. And they had actually studied the use of quercetin um, against the SARS virus. The researchers are finding that quercetin is able to inhibit viral replication early on in the process. So it's not specific to a uh, unique type of virus. It can affect multiple different viruses, especially the respiratory viruses, pre preventing them from multiplying, turning into a huge problem in the first place. Standard dose, there isn't an obvious published dose. When you extrapolate it back based on the human dose, you're looking at approximately three milligrams per pound uh, twice daily. Number five, a remedy that works really well for a dog who's got a bleeding nail. <gasps> You're trimming your dog's nail, you cut a nail too short, blood everywhere, what do you do? First thing, don't panic. Yes, there's blood coming out of your dog's nails, but all of a sudden if you're panicking, you're running around like a crazy person, your dog gets nervous, his heart rate goes up, and guess what? He's gonna be running around, his blood pressure rises, there's blood going all around your house. Like so, at the very least, just. Just don't panic, just take a deep breath, okay? It looks bad, nails bleed a lot, it's relatively a small amount of blood, just looks far worse than it is, and there's things that you can do. Right. These are three home remedies that you should be considering. The first one, flour or cornstarch. I prefer cornstarch. I've just got a little jar of it here, pour it into a bowl, and I got this little fruit bowl container. And you're gonna take that cornstarch, you're gonna put your dog's foot right into it, assuming they stay still again. You're gonna hold the nail right onto the, <laughs> the nail, right onto the cornstarch, right? So pushing it right in, I find is best. Of course, you turn everything white, as you can see. Or you can put something on the end of your finger and put it right there once again on the nail that's bleeding. Number four, it's a slippery remedy, great for gastrointestinal disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and even our cats with CRF. Mm. A slippery herb used for cats with kidney failure, coughing dogs. So what is the mysterious powder I'm talking about, the mysterious plant? It is this called slippery elm. It's from the inner bark of the slippery elm tree. It's a tree native to North America, found throughout the Eastern United States, even Southern Canada, Southern Ontario. It's been used for hundreds, well, like thousands of years. And it's got pretty impressive medicinal properties. Not only that, also being really safe uh, for our dogs and cats. So here's how it can help your pets. In using slippery elm with your dogs and cats, Ideally, you're getting the fine inner ground powder, which is here, because then you can formulate it the way you'd like to. It may be more difficult for some of you guys to get that. You don't have access to a natural health store that's gonna have this in bulk. Then you may need to be going with the capsules. But the fine slippery elm bark powder is ideal. So the slippery elm works because when it's mixed in with water, it forms this almost like sticky, almost slimy or mucilage 
And that's how it works by coating, say, the stomach, the intestinal tract, also by coating the throat. Soothing, soothing these really inflamed, irritated stomach, intestinal tract, in the case of a cat that has some really serious GI upset, secondary to kidney disease, or a coughing dog. It forms that really thick, kind of brownish paste. And when I touch it, it's definitely, hmm, pasty and slimy. Here's my sort of slimy, brown, pasty, slippery elm concoction. Just want to do a little test taste so I know what I'm feeding uh, Murray and Tula. Mm. It tastes more kind of a slimy pablum thing. There isn't actually a lot of taste to it. And number three, this oil which is wonderful for wound healing, great for constipation. A bean that produces an oil, good as a industrial lubricant and also a great home remedy for dogs and cats. There's an oil called castor oil. Many of you guys may have heard of it. It is quite popular for its use as a laxative. First, it's a very powerful stimulant laxative. It's got a bunch of studies, never mind it's being used for well over a thousand years for this very same purpose. The way it works is it's broken down in the small intestine uh, to a fatty acid called ricinoleic acid. Here we have some castor oil here. Many people, people I know, use it to help relieve constipation. Also really safe and is effective for our animals. Um, it's something I haven't discussed in the past, but a really good option. We've got a seriously constipated dog or cat and you're wanting it like a safe, natural remedy. Number two, you've got an allergic dog, you should be trying this remedy. Dog itching, dog scratching, dog hair loss. A new natural remedy for dog allergy. Find out what it is, how it can help your dog in this video. This is a plant nutrient. It comes from soy called beta-cystosterol. Beta-cystosterol, it has been studied for atopic dermatitis. That is the veterinary term for environmental allergy. And that's what most of our dogs have. That's what's causing all the itching and scratching. This was shown to be effective in animal studies for atopic dermatitis. It worked by interrupting the inflammatory cascade that's seen in allergies in terms of blocking interleukin-6. A pretty standard dose would be about one milligram per pound, about two milligrams per kilo, meaning a 50 pound dog like Pippi, she get about 50 milligrams. Tula, she get about 20 milligrams. Monkey looking yellow, thick gelatinous thing. Weird. It looks like fat. Well, it's flax oil and another sterile and that's what it is. That's what makes up cell membranes. Will Pippi eat our capsule of beta testosterone? Here, Pippi, show us wrong. Oh, she's licking it. Yum, Pippi. Oh, now you're going to have shinier coat, be less itchy, less hair loss. Mm. And number one, a dog dewormer being used for cancer. A dog dewormer as a possible cancer treatment in people? Advanced lung cancer, which had spread. No chance for a cure. Just a few months to live. In 2016, a man by the name of Joe Tippins was given that exact diagnosis. A friend who happened to be a veterinarian and told, told, told him about a dog dewormer called Panicure or Fenbendazole that had research and actually had some people showing uh, success where they had some of these un incurable cancers uh, that had been successfully treated with this dog dewormer. So what are the doses? Well, the dog doses for deworming are 50 milligrams per kilo once daily for three days. The liquid panic here here is 100 milligrams per mil, meaning little Tula would be getting five mils, which is 500 milligrams, once daily for three days.
the reported regimen for treating dogs, for treating cats with cancer are 50 mg per kilo. So the similar deworming dose given once daily for three days on, four days off. If your animal responds, then they're suggesting that you continue it on that regimen. The cat dose, it's 50 milligrams per kilo once daily for three days. Murray, an average cat weighs about five kilos, about 10 pounds. They would get about 200 to 250 milligrams. So about two mils of this once daily for three days. Murray's a bit more, he'd be getting three mils once daily for three days. Then once again, if they respond to that treatment, then the suggestion is that you continue that as an ongoing basis. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.